so the Canon R6 has been out long enough to have a remake. Honestly, it hasn't felt that long since this camera came crashing into the scene as the sidekick to the R5. The Canon R6 Mark II, whether you like it or not, is here. While you're sitting waiting on back order for it to be available, let's take a look and see if it may be the newest, greatest camera for you. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I have the original R6 and you've seen my highs and my lows with it. It's a great mirrorless camera that boasts beautiful 10-bit Canon C-Log footage, but it's held back by a few quirks and outshined by Canon's main events, the R5. But with the new addition to the R6 Mark II, could this be a chance for the R6 to redeem itself and be a true solid alternative to the great R5 and R5C? I think it actually might be. R6 Mark II comes at a price point of $2,499, only $200 more than what the original R6 is going for nowadays. So that's a very interesting price point to come in at. Based on that alone, you might actually wonder if there's anything really different here. But one of the clear differences right off the bat is the photo resolution. The Mark II boasts a 24.2 megapixel sensor, while the Mark I is only 20.1. Now in the grand scheme of things, this is not a very high jump, especially considering the R5 has a whopping 45 megapixel sensor, but you do get slightly better flexibility with your photos. Considering the frame size jumps from 5,472 by 3,648 to 6,000 by 4,000. You know, I really like it when it's whole numbers like that. Reading off the resolution for this is a mouthful. This allows for more room to crop in and potentially better photo prints. For video resolution, internally, there is no change between these two cameras. You can record 4K up to 60 frames per second and HD at 120 frames per second. However, the new feature with the Mark II is externally you can record up to 6K raw. That's a pretty cool addition. Would have been nice to maybe have that internally. Well, I guess this is Canon after all, so there has to be some areas where it lags behind other cameras. But in all honesty, having relatively affordable 6K recording in Canon's beautiful color science is something I would love to get my hands on. It's just a shame it's gonna require an additional purchase. And it may be potentially challenging right now, considering that there's not a whole lot of external recorders that can record in 6K. In terms of the ergonomics, not much change here. What you will see is there is a dedicated switch for photo versus video mode, which is nice. That's about it. Not that this camera really needed any updates in the first place. It already had a lot of great things going for it, like its screen, viewfinder, as well as its autofocus functions. All of that is brought over to the new model. So, so far so good, I'd say, but let's get to the main event. What everyone wants to know, what I want to know, recording time and overheating. The original R6 camera, I continuously had overheating issues with, even with the firmware updates. And as someone who does not like to compromise my image quality and my frame rate, this is something I've battled probably more than the average user of this camera. Now, what I love to see is that Canon has nixed the 30 minute recording limit. It really probably should have been that way from the start. Can it handle 30 continuous minutes? That's the biggest question. Well, there is good news. After many initial tests done with the R6 Mark II, it's clear that there are improvements made to the overheating. 4K, 24 and 30 frames per second typically do not trigger the dreaded overheating screen and can theoretically record until the battery dies. The 4K 60 frames per second unfortunately still lags behind. However, Canon has been forthright this time and claims that you can get up to 40 minutes of continuous recording in 4K 60 frames per second. And with the addition of a temperature gauge, you can closely monitor how close it is to overheating instead of getting a small quick warning just before it happens. Honestly, while it's not perfect, I'll take it. Most of the time when I am shooting 4K 60 frames per second, it's B-roll in shorter increments. So hopefully that should not trigger it as easy as it did before. And what's also great is now you have a temporary solution of recording in 4K 24 or 4K 30 if the camera does overheat with 60. A fair trade in my opinion. And honestly, that's where the list of upgrades pretty much ends. Everything else included is identical to the 5D Mark I. I said 5D Mark I, R6 Mark I. 
What the new camera does well mirrors what the old camera does well, even though it's a mirrorless camera. If you want to learn more about all the great features that the R6 has to offer, please check out my other videos about the R6 that I've done in the past. But on a base level, the R6 Mark II is a solid mirrorless camera to compete with some of Sony's impressive lineup. It's meant to be a more affordable flagship mirrorless camera for Canon compared to the R5. It's built as light, it's flip out screen makes it easy to get photos and videos from a variety of different angles. It holds up in a ton of different shooting situations and for a ton of jobs in a professional setting photo and video. Can't always say that for a lot of cameras within this price point. Now, should this camera be your next purchase in 2023? Or should you save your money and go with the original? I think there's arguments for both sides here. In terms of the quality and the resolution, I think the $200 price difference is appropriate here. To me, this seems like the real version of the R6 that they originally wanted to release. Would I have liked to see more out of the upgrade? Probably, but that's not really what the R6 is meant to be. If this upgrade was more significant than it already is, it would just be released as a different model. This is still a good, cheaper alternative to the 5D Mark IV. I said it again, I've been talking about that camera too much. This is still a cheaper alternative to the R5. Now, specifically for photographers, I believe you're still okay with getting the original version. The increased megapixel count does help, but it's not a huge difference. I think the bigger benefits to this camera come on the video side rather than the photo side. The photos that come out of the Mark I are fantastic and at times honestly rival my 5D Mark IV. There it is. I don't think the increased resolution is going to be that noticeable. But honestly, if you got an extra 200 bucks, can't go wrong getting the new one. If you're mainly shooting video, I would 100% go with the Mark II. For just $200 more, you open yourself up to more flexibility with 4K shooting. The ability to shoot just more than 30 minutes at a time alone may be the only reason alone. I mean, all cameras should be that way. You'd think at this point, right? You do not wanna go into a paid job and not have confidence in your equipment. And that honestly is what this new camera is to its core, a more confident and solid version of the R6. If you already own an R6, should you upgrade? If you're mainly photo, I think you're okay staying put. I've met tons of photographers that use this as their primary photo camera. If you're mainly video, I think it's worth the upgrade. But keep in mind, this is mainly a functionality upgrade, not a quality upgrade. I know that the five, I know that the six R, gah, I know that the R6 Mark II has 6K capabilities, but again, it's not internal. You need an external recorder for that. And I honestly expect that most users of that camera are probably not gonna be using that function. Don't expect your videos to be sharper. Don't expect the dynamic range to be any better, but having the increased functionality will allow you to perform better with this camera. Overall, I think Canon made a good move with this camera. Did it make a groundbreaking move? No, but in my opinion, it's fulfilled what it tried to originally do when the R6 originally released. And now people have a more confident choice for a cheaper professional mirrorless camera made by Canon. And it's an upgrade I'm considering doing myself. And if I do, I'll let you know and definitely do an in-depth review. Let me know what you think about this camera and if you're considering an upgrade as well. Hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on it soon.